Sorry? I'm a little bit nervous. Why are you nervous? I don't know, man. Like, we're, we're, we're talking like a professional setup now. No, nah, no, nah, it's all casual. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, good. How are you guys going? Good, yeah. good. That looks amazing, by the way, in the background. Oh, thanks. We had to do some recording today, so it was already set up. Awesome. Are they new? Are they new dresses or is like stuff you already? No, these are from um, Paris a couple of years ago, from uh, the f- first collection that we showed in Paris. Amazing, man. That's amazing. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's crazy. So, um, what's what's been going on, man? How you been going just during the COVID thing, anyway? Just in general. Um, yeah, good. It's, look, it's been interesting. It hasn't been um, the easiest, but um, I think you know. One being in, in SA, we're pretty lucky here. Um, yeah, yeah. But we've got a team of 19 staff. So just trying to manage, you know, uh, looking after them uh, is, is basically first priority. So we kind of have put measures in place to make sure that, um, particularly early on in, in, in the scenario, um, making sure that they were safe. And um, so we kind of divided up the team and made sure that we're, limiting who's coming in in and out of the building so any clients have been shifted to skype um and yeah but we're, we're managing now we're just doing a lot of cleaning and and kind of i guess setting up and preparations for when we can get back into full swing i think awesome man and did you you guys obviously were going to travel overseas this year obviously to like paris. yeah and to be in paris in um last week of june we're leaving so yeah. That's obviously not going ahead. So we're just kind of working out what the rest of the year looks like for us and how we're going to manage. But I guess, you know, everyone in the fashion industry and most industries really are in the same boat. So just a bit of an adjustment. So we just have to think, I guess, creatively. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people are in the same boat. Everyone's just trying to, trying to I mean, you know, no <laughs> one's done something like this before, especially our generation. No. There's no real right or wrong. So I think, Everyone can just do their best and, uh, and you know, just try and get through it. There's definitely light at the end of the tunnel, especially in SA, like you said. Yeah. What are you, what are you doing, like, pulling out, a, like, a little scribble book, making new dress designs? Like, what are you doing in spare time, like, with all this quarantine stuff? Look, at the moment, there's been a lot of more business planning, I guess, going on, um, which is hard. I mean, I, I find normally I have to juggle multiple hats. Um, right. So I have to think creatively and I also have to think, you know, as, as a business owner. Um, so there's been a lot of, um, I've been doing one week off, one week on at work. Um, and, and my week off, I'm kind of, I'm just at home basically like, um, I guess, kind of out strategies and, and, and what we're going to do and, and how we can best um, meet our clients' needs and team's needs um, and, and working in a different way. Um, and, you know, going through all of our um, staff guidelines and, and policies and procedures and how we can best um, streamline those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my weeks on, I'm working in-house with the team, um, trying to develop uh, the, the next collection and then mm-hmm. also um, working on, you know, obviously the client orders that we do have that we can work on at the moment um, as yeah. both things have been postponed um, most weddings and and events or well, pretty much all weddings and events have been postponed yeah. uh, for the foreseeable future so we're just kind of doing a lot of admin work around that as to when and then yeah. we're scheduling yeah. working out when we're able to start those things again yeah and you and you want to be prepared right because there's going to be a massive amount of like weddings and everything <laughs> all at once hey and that's it. That's the issue I think that we're going to face um, mm-hmm. is that when we can go back to normal, um, we're going to have our normal workflow and workload plus everything that we haven't been able to do in the last yeah. couple of months yeah. is kind of ha- going to have to be um, jammed into a, a small amount of time. And because everything's handmade, it's uh, not that easy to do, but yeah. you know, we'll manage. And I actually feel like as well, like even for me, when I got my, 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 my wedding suit, I was like trying to maintain the exact same weight from my first yeah. meeting. So if you're trying to maintain your weight for, I don't know, I don't know the full process, but let's say for yeah. four months, now that's been extended another six months. Exactly. Hakes now, like that's extended. You just got to do like detoxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat. 
just eat fresh air. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and, and some people are moving their weddings like a whole year. So, um, oh, yeah. You know, it's um, it, it's a tricky thing to do. But, um, and, you know, it, it's not just their dress that they're having to worry about, but, you know, it's it's everything. It's the the venue, all of that. I mean, you know, yeah. guys, hey, you've been yeah. through that yeah. recently. So, yeah, so um, I had the, involved. I'll put it on there. Um, we had the pleasure, my wife Samantha had the pleasure of having um, a Polo Sebastian dress and, definitely was a beautiful part of our day and and yeah um and the real actually you know what paul i'm gonna just say it the coolest thing ever and it was actually a really unexpected surprise for me when i walked into the when i when i walked into the church i'm not the bride when my wife walked in to the church and she came up and i was uh there was a lot of hay fever and that my eyes were watering and stuff <laughs> i actually looked down and i saw my lyrics on the dress yeah because i haven't seen you since actually i just realized yeah you guys are reuniting now. yeah and and <laughs> honestly man that was like i literally said under my breath to my wife i said yeah you got me you got me <laughs> I, was, I was i was just a like i said it was a lot of hay fever from that i was just a mess man so well that was all sam actually adding that in so yeah she yeah. she did well with that yeah that was so cool man that was like the coolest thing and i think it was her something blue as well because it was blue yeah, and she, she had the two blue birds on there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, I was a man. But there you go, guys. There's a fun fact for you. <laughs> um, no, well, I had, I mean, that was such a, a joy to work on. It. And, you know, Sam is so lovely. And so you're very, very lucky to have her. Um, but yeah, that that was all her because we kind of talked about different ideas and how, how we could make the dress special and unique. Yeah. And um, we talked about embroidering, you know, your names or something like that. And then she said, you know, what about if we um, did a song lyric? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that was, you know, so unique and so special. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that. Yeah. That's it, cool. um, Amazing. I love that. I don't put any Lil John lyrics on this. She actually picked mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Hey, right, Paul, I just want to, man... Okay, so let's get the elephant out of the room. We all went to school together. Paul and I in the same year. Yeah. Steph was a couple of years below us. Yeah. I don't... Paul, Paul, we got along in school. Yeah, yeah, really well. I yeah. don't remember. I have to say, I'm sorry, Steph. I, I, I mean, I've said this to you before. I didn't. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, usually, when you're when you're when you're a couple of years above, you think, yeah, there's little losers. You know what I mean? Steph was but... normally just in the tuck shop. You yeah. always. <laughs> I mean, we weren't actually friends at school. Really no, at we all. So, no. so it's understandable that your year level was, was a bit snobby towards us. That's okay. Oh, no, oh, look, I think we had a pretty good year, ne year level, don't you think, Nick? Oh, no, I, I agree, man. I agree. No, we had a really, I think even the teachers all said that we, we had a really good group because everyone was really quite close and really good Correct. friends. I mean, I, I still see everyone. So, um, you know, I, I feel very blessed to have been in that, in that group. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just remember having like, the best time. Yeah, we, we, we had a laugh, man. I remember, to be honest, Paul, I remember you being the most studious, well-put-together student I've ever seen. Like, there was never, like... I always used to sit behind you. I remember yeah. the studies. I would sit behind you, and I, I don't know if your back or your, like, posture ever moved out of place. You were, like, one of those guys at school. And you know what, man, to be honest, because I worked on your shoot, you, you carry that into your work as well. And that's where I want to start, man. Like, if Steph and I were talking about it off off camera before we rang you were like so where did this all start man like where did it all like begin for you do you know what i mean like getting into this kind of stuff well i mean i think yeah i mean you would have seen that i don't know if you remember firsthand or you know the, like the first the preparing for the first show and stuff like i mean i i started sewing when i was three years old so it's, it's something that's always been oh, yeah. um that's young. a passion of mine um and then you know i would do I was making dresses out of wrapping paper and newspaper when I was, yeah, like around three years old for friends. And then um, my parents put me through um, art classes on the weekends. And then I eventually, I think when I started high school um, was when I started doing private sewing lessons. So Wednesday nights, I would leave school a little bit earlier and, and go to sewing classes. Awesome. And I started making dresses for... Um, friends who were a little bit um a few years above us um for their school yeah. um sarah's dress you remember and, and, yeah. and, and all those girls at saint mary's and um 
it kind of just snowballed from there because they their friends saw saw the dresses they wanted one and then their friends saw and they wanted one so it kind of grew from there so I was doing I had to be studious because I had to get my homework done during the day at school (laughs) and I would sometimes even like bit nerdy but I'd go into the library during lunchtime to get my homework done because I knew when I got home I had to get to work on these dresses and I would work until like 3 a.m in the morning wow and then be at school falling asleep in class so probably the reason I didn't move was because I was half asleep (laughs) (laughs) Uh, sleeping standing up (laughs) and then um yeah and then in in year 12 um I was given the opportunity to do a subject called extension studies and it was basically a plan your own topic. And I, you know, had been talking about wanting to start my own brand. And, um, so for years since, since around year nine, I kind of had a clear vision of, you know, this is what I want to do. I, 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 before that, I didn't really know that fashion design was a job. It was just something that it was a passion of mine. Um, but yeah, when I was, in year, I, I, around year nine, I remember saying I wanted to have a fashion show and I wanted to start my own label. That's and awesome. then in year 12, I was given the opportunity to, to do so. So we, I started planning a, um, a runway to raise money for Canteen, the cancer charity. Yeah. And um, I honestly thought that we'd be lucky to have 100 people show up to this event. Um, but, you know, like, heaps of people from school turned up uh we we had it was uh, 660 people turn up that night uh, we had a line down the block and then um That's full page in the paper the next day and then palace fashion was born from there and I, I just remember at that time um such great memories of like community spirit everyone really came together to really support yeah me and I think because people knew how passionate I was about yeah. my dreams and, and about starting Paolo Sebastian so you know friends parents were around our house the week before the show sewing buttons and doing hems and, and and all sorts of things and they were there on the day helping set up and but anything that anyone could do that they were there um helping and lending a hand so um I'm incredibly grateful to those people f- for doing that um and you know they're still very much a part of of my life today and um, they're the reason that i'm where i am because it's not doing this job is not something that one person can do it really does take a, a, an army of people so yeah and then um you know as i said we we had a full page in the advertiser the next day and then i started getting wedding dress orders and um that was in july of 2007 so we were halfway through year 12 at that stage Wow. And um, I kind of thought that, you know, once the fashion show was over, I'd be able to focus on the rest of my subjects, but it wasn't really the case <laughs> um, because it was just kind of Palace Sebastian was taking off, which was great. Um, and I really used all of my year 12 to focus on developing Palace Sebastian. So for English, um, we had to do report writing and I yeah. wrote a report on Palace Sebastian. Business studies was a business plan for Palace Sebastian. Um Design was a was a catalog for Palace Sebastian. So a, a, everything that I could do was revolved was yeah. around, awesome. around Palace Sebastian. Hey, you. That's cool. It's very cool. And there's something super inspiring about um, inspiring about that, um, Paul, because you were super specific from, like you said, year nine. And I think that's why why it bled into everything because everyone around you knew how specific and focused you were on that goal. It wasn't a blase thing, mm-hmm. and and that's inspiring for me because so many times you hear these stories like even like I'm in hip hop and hip hop artists will have they went under that name and then they changed their moniker to that and then you know then they changed their name again for you Polo Sebastian was it for for from the start and that's yeah. that's, awesome. that's that's amazing thank you well it's I mean it's a, it's a play on my name it's like Paolo's just Paul in Italian yeah. Sebastian my middle name so it was I think I came up with it when I was twelve. And it just kind of stuck. <laughs> it's meant to be. Did you mean like, you know, like when you were going through those times, like when the, the brand, did you have, were you scared? At one point you were like, is this what I, re- is this not what I want to do, but is this going to work out? Like, is this like my purpose? Yeah. I, like, I don't think I've ever, ha- I get asked that a lot. Um, 
I don't think there's a moment where I ever questioned doing it or wanting to do yeah. it. Um, it was always, that was, that was my only option. Um, people used to ask me at the time, especially like in year 12 when we were picking subjects and things or p picking um, courses for when we graduated. Um, the question I got asked a lot was, what if it falls through? What if it doesn't work? And I, they said, what's your plan B? And I said, there is no plan B. So plan A just has to work. So I yeah. think going into it with that mentality of that there is no other option than um, making it a success uh, is why that it's, you know, worked out. And, and by no means am I anywhere near where I plan to be. There's still a yeah. very long way ahead. And um, I've got a fantastic, more uh, above fantastic, I don't even have the word to describe my team. They're, they're, Nick, as you know, you've worked with them. Yeah. Uh, well, some of them, um, they're just the, the best bunch of, of people. And um, it's just, it's so much fun going to work every day. And um, they're the reason Pallet Sebastian is a success. And I think, you know, I, I can't wait to see where it takes us because there is, um, I, don't, I, I don't have very, I guess I have a specific idea of where I see the brand and, and what I feel it could achieve. But, yeah. you know, al along the, the road, the plans might vary or change slightly. Um, and I'm excited to see how that all pans out. So am I. That's awesome. So I, I, I want to start working for you now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up like, you know. Well, I you know, can. You were uh, very ha handy at, at that shoot. Yeah, I was handy. People were standing on my back. But if, if you look like a Literally. manic... Literally, uh, there was, can I tell that story? There was one, yeah, of course. there was one shot they were trying to get at sunset and we're running out of light. And um, Simon, the, our photographer, who had come in from Paris to do the shoot, um, he's an Adelaide guy originally, um, yeah. and he's actually shot all of our campaigns for the last six or so years. Yeah. Um, we needed to get him up higher and we didn't have time to run and get a chair or a stool or a ladder or anything. So Burn Nick, daylight. Nick got on all fours and Simon stood on his oh. back. I love that. And the shot, the shot's amazing. So thank you, Nick. Yeah. You used that shot, didn't you? In the new campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the front cover of the, the campaign. Wow. That's why. Have, have you released, sorry, Seth, have you yeah. released, have you released that campaign yet? Yeah, yeah. That's, it's on oh, the, course. it's online. It's on the website. Awesome, man. I'll send, yeah. I'll send it through. Yeah, Nick, for that show, you really were the backbone, man. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, that's awesome, man. Oh, you know, you know, like you know, how you said at three years old, um, you you were already like sewing and and doing things. Um, obviously, it wasn't the the dress in the background because you were three. Oh my gosh! Oh, sorry, that was that's a oh, was, oh, was, that, was, that, that, was that like a like, <laughs> campaign that you forgot to tell us about? We leaked it. We leaked we it. We get it, man. We get it. You make good <laughs> The camera turned around. It's not my fault. Sorry. Yeah. It's all good. It's yeah, all good. good. Um, no, no. I, I was just thinking, like, from three years old, like, and and obviously people around you would have been talking, like, this is a wonder kid, you know. And I, I grew up playing soccer and. Stuff. <laughs> no, 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 no. Seriously, seriously. From, Do you, you want to work for? Is this like your pitch to work? No, I'm asking you. <laughs> The build yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, this go, is go, the build up go, to go. a question. Yeah. How did you? Did you? Did you just block out that kind of talk? Did that talk not occur? Because I feel like if my little cousin was three years old doing that, I'd have the guy on my shoulders walking down Rundle Mall playing the line right. song. <laughs> yeah. Um, just parading him. No, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Um, Obviously not at three. So you don't. You don't have to be humble here, Paul. All right. No, I'm not trying to be humble. I'm just uh... play this ever we get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, look, I think definitely a lot of people would comment on my drawings and things like that from a very young age, um, because I, I love to draw and I was always quite good at art. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I paid m much attention or maybe just people didn't say it to my face or around me. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of just kept going with it. I, I don't know. But yeah. also, I, regardless of a anyone saying anything positive or negative, um, I think in regards to my work, um, I'm always very, uh, I'm super critical. 
So um, in, in, a, in a good way, I guess, because it, it pushes me to do better each time. Yeah. So um, yeah. whether or not someone liked it, it was, or, or what I had drawn or what I had made, it was more about whether or not I thought it was good enough. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of what, what kept yeah. me going forward. And yeah. also you got to remember at that time, the the world was a different place and, and, and fashion particularly was a very different place. So there weren't a lot of people, particularly in Adelaide, doing fashion design. So I think people didn't really know how to take it, like if it, if it was a serious thing or if it could be a serious career or just a hobby. Um, so I think a lot of people maybe thought, oh, that's nice, Paul makes clothes. Um, yeah, I, I, to be honest, don't know what people yeah. thought. But, you know, now, like fast forward to now um what a lot of people tend to say like for people in in my yeah. family and friends um will say that you know that they always saw they, it, it's just funny the stories that people um yeah it's funny that, when they say you know like we always knew that um you would do well because of xyz or you know yeah. when you were middle used to do this um and we thought yeah. that that was really special so yeah, yeah. And that's why I said it because that actually I've actually I actually knew you I didn't know exactly three I actually knew you did it from a young age. My mum found out from somebody, you know, like oh, really? that got around and, and you know, and that's why I asked you because clearly it was something maybe and in a positive way it was going around and everyone was kind of maybe had a bit of buzz or it could be a hindsight conversation of like, I always knew, you know, yeah. and and like you said, yeah, it, it, it can be like that as well. But no, I think it's I think it's really interesting actually. So um oh. I remember going back to school because the first fashion show, as I said, it happened in July 2007. It was in the mid, mid-year holidays at school. And I remember coming back to school that first week um, after the show and literally walking through the corridor and people like stopped and turned. It was like a movie. People were like clapping at me and... Um, it was just the weirdest, the most, it was, it was amazing. Um, and it felt great, but the, like everyone was in such support. And um, like, I didn't realize that people took that much notice of what I was doing. Yeah. yeah, you definitely, I actually think, I don't know if it was that exact day, but I do remember seeing you when I was a little bit older. I don't even think you were still at the school or maybe you'd come to talk to students. Did that ever happen? Maybe, yeah, I, that's yeah. something that I do quite a bit of. Because um, I was like, this guy looks super sharp, and he was just, like, <laughs> he just had business studies. Yeah, his business no, no, studies. No, no. <laughs> Seriously, as you walked through, I was like, and I just looked over, and I remember someone, oh, yeah, that's all we own is Paolo Sebastian, and he's doing doing really good things. And I was just like, you know, eating my fourth pie for the day, and I just looked over. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> <man>. So <laughs> Steph was in the corner of the tuck shop going, is that Paul? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Paul, man, who is your idol? Like, who's your idol growing up? like in that world and have you met that person like is that like you're like on their level now like um, no look, my idol i think in the fashion industry is christian dior who passed away in 1956 so yeah. the chances of me meeting them is impossible but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think like in terms of a, a career like i, I look at what Dior did to shape fashion and that's something that I look at and 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 just oh. always inspired by it. Um, but I think like on, on a local level, I think, um, you know, I look at des designers like Alex Perry um, yeah. and, and those types of people who, when I was 17, looking at the fashion industry, they were the, the leading Australian designers who kind of built a pathway um, and, and a platform for, for Australian designers. So um, I kind of always looked up to them and um, was inspired by their journey and how they came from, you know, humble Australian background and, yep. and built up this this amazing brand. So um, certainly there, and I, I, I've never met Alex Perry or-, or um, Oh, wow. But, you know- it, But you're playing- uh, He's definitely a designer that I, I remember um looking up up to and and um was just very inspired by by his story yeah yeah that's awesome man wow um 
I, I actually, I actually had a question for you as well, um, Paul. Was it always women's clothing, like um, you know, fashion, high fashion? Um, couture has definitely been my my passion, you know, since yeah. since a kid. Um, because I love the um, rose a little the, bit. The, sorry, that's just cut out. Um, <laughs> because I love the, I guess the the sewing aspect of it and the detail and the craftsmanship that goes into yeah. it. Um, but I, and, and, you know, you can easily take those skills in, into menswear as well. Um, and I, I am actually trained in tailoring. Um, wow. I, I do love doing menswear and tailoring as well. And in my very first collection, I did do um, quite a, quite a bit of menswear. Um, and it's definitely something that I want to do down the track and, and do a menswear line eventually. Um, it's just, you know, one of those, steps that we're yet to to get to yeah you get there man. yeah that's right when you're there just make sure you know, uh, he's a 42 long <laughs> okay and, sure I, <laughs> uh you know just just post him straight out thanks man. dude you set it up now man i'm gonna i'll pull this is gonna i want to get juicy now a little bit don't get scared okay. <laughs> you're like nervous now no i'm not gonna ask anything but i want to know, know what like, Nick's like like who 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 have you dressed man and what are they oh. like, like this person you've dressed and be honest with me what are they like don't be professional <laughs> half a million oh, okay. people yeah. we, no. um look, we've dressed lots of people um Who's kim, your kardashian, kim kardashian Katy perry um what have you uh, met kim face to face? <laughs> um met- no i haven't met either of them um on on a on a Local scale or Australian scale, we've done like um, Carrie Bigmore, Michelle Bridges, Ed and Nicodemo. Um, I can definitely say that they're the nicest ladies that you will ever come across. Um, Carrie, I saw recently at um, Banff, and um, it was really good to catch up with her. And we've been working together for six years now, and so we've got a really good relationships and, and she's just the loveliest person and cool. and what you see on tv is really what she's like she's just very humble and very easygoing that's awesome man wow so what, what, what's sorry can i ask another question i know yeah, we're going one for one mate i need like what's what's the goal like what's the dream? like what's the like the mount rushmore the like okay this is i did it like, I've actually, because you, you know, like for me, telling Steph and I that you dress Kim Kardashian, I'm like, yeah, it's done. Close. <laughs> Give me the key. The factory's done. Packing it, but like, what's your like? What's your like mount? Like your mountaintop? Oh, uh, there's heat. Oh, well, first of all, uh, like the aim since I was 12 was to reach haute couture. So that's um, at the moment we're, we're a couture brand. Right. Um, but to reach haute couture is sort of like a Michelin star. So you get to use the uh-huh. haute at the very yeah. start. Um, that's it. Michelin star is probably the easiest way to yep. um, describe. Sorry, screen. My phone keeps telling me that it's running out of battery. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, so that's probably the thing that we've been working towards, and that's one of the reasons that we travel to Paris every year to showcase our work there. Um, that's definitely been our main goal, um, but it takes years and years to get there. At, at present, there's only around um, 25 houses wow. worldwide that, that get to use that title. Um, but, you know, I'd love to do shoe, shoe line, um, fragrances, handbags, ready to wear. Um, so they're all things that are sort of in the pipeline, but um, don't know when they're going to actually come to fruition. But that's certainly, um, I, I think, my goal has always been to be a mega brand for Australia and, and a mega luxury brand and, and offer the full service and everything that um, you could want. Australia's own Louis Vuitton, pretty much. Well, even though they started in bags, you're, 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 Australia's very Christian Dior. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, that's no. Just even, just even like, like just your, like the way you think about it and how, I, I know Nick was saying Mount Rushmore, almost, like for you that like yeah there's a Mount Rushmore but at the same time for you there's no Mount Rushmore it's just your journey you're loving you're loving you're, you know you're loving to live it you know yeah I mean look, at the end of the day and what I said from the beginning was uh, I 
want to do this job from Adelaide. And a lot of people said, you know, you, you're going to have to move interstate or overseas if you want to get anywhere. Um, but having lived overseas when I was studying, um, I kind of quickly, um, it kind of quickly cemented in me the fact that I really love this job and it's my dream, and it's my passion, but I want to do it with my family and friends around me. And um, because I, I love what I'm doing, I don't care if it's a success or not. I just love yeah. doing the work. So if I was still working in my parents' lounge room on the floor as my cutting table and had, you know, like this much space to sew a dress in, um, I'd still be happy because it, the, the actual process of creating is what makes me happy. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. And I like how you wrote your own narrative and, I, and like doing music. And I'm sure Nick's the same with his acting as well. Um, you always hear those those things that like you need to go overseas and stuff like that. But you, you wrote your own narrative and that's an inspiration for me. I'm sure it's me, an inspiration for Nick as well. And that's an inspiration for everyone out there to say, man, you, you can do what you want to do. You you choose your narrative. And, and that's, I think it's so awesome to know that you're in Adelaide, you know, and or doing it from where you, yeah. doing it from where you want to do it. And, yeah. and that on top that you're doing what you, you've done since you were three years old. You know, not many people can say that, that they just carry that on from like when they first picked up sewing or like first picked up a ball and they're playing song. You know, not many people have that luxury and you, you, you're you able to do that and just commit to that. And like you said, you'd, if you could do it in your bedroom, you'd do it in your bedroom. When you're under, yeah. Right? So that's that's powerful, man. And that's why you're so successful too. And you've you got a good, like you're cool. I don't know, cool. Is he cool now? Yeah, of course. Oh, because he's on I'm the cool now. Awesome. <laughs> don't blush man this is the only compliment you're gonna get if, if, you, <laughs> no, if, you, if, you, if you if you can make nick a leather jacket that doesn't interfere with the microphone because that's all i've heard for yeah, the dude, last half an hour oh, okay. you hey, paul you gotta do men's i'll wear your stuff for sure man 100 percent. no i think you're the first person i call what you'll be the first person i call when we do it Thank you, man. I appreciate. Paul, it. you can you can you can let out let our viewers know like was Nick the class clown because even in this interview he's just he just hasn't stopped. Class clown is exactly the words that I would use. Oh man, he hasn't stopped tonight. Even tonight, like the teachers would be looking at this going, "Yeah, uh, Nick, you haven't changed, mate." <laughs> no, but it's true. I remember. So, what class was it that you sat behind me? Business, business <laughs> studies. I think we business, sat together. I think it was. I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure it was business studies, and I just remember. Yeah, like you were always you always had people in stitches. Yeah, that's good, man. I, I reckon I made yeah. you laugh on the on, on your shoot as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> See, Paul, Paul was trying to concentrate, and Nick's still there. Did you did you think on the shoot, man? This guy sat behind me in business studies while I was trying to get my work done so I could go home and actually do what I wanted to do. And he's now he's at my shoot, and he's still haunting me, telling <laughs> jokes. No, I think I was pretty chill at the shoot, wasn't I? Ah, yeah, you're good, but you you got a great eye for your work, man. Like, you know what you want. And I was telling Stefan that before we came, I'm like, dude, speak nice to Paul. He knows what he wants. Like, if he can, he'll tell you to get it. <laughs> nah, 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 that never No never, way. Nah, never, no way. I've, met, I've met Paul. Paul, I've met you multiple times. Yeah, yeah multiple times. times. In the shop just... chasing right now? No, <laughs> I'm joking. No. No, no, it's awesome, man. Nick, uh... What? Nick needs to go back into detention. What, what, what's the plan for the rest of the night, Paul? He what was in do detention that? a lot, actually. That's another thing. Yeah, that was. That is yeah. true, actually. Sorry, can't cut out. Sorry, cut out. Um, what's the plan for the rest of the night? Um, I've actually got another interview. i um, doing a, um Instagram Live with um, Wedded Wonderland, which is um, an Instagram page that's been um, very supportive of us. So we've got that uh, in couple of hours and um in the meantime i need to plan what we're doing for this collection so the time is ticking on it um oh, are you trying I, keep to say I keep procrastinating and pushing it out no i'm not trying to wrap you up i'm just oh, saying want... no we can leave if you like no you know? no no that's not, I'm, <laughs> not what i meant no no that's good man all right well mate thank you very much for your time no, um, thanks for having me you're you're, awesome, you're an man. absolute legend. Just to just to even have a chat with us, mate. Super super grateful for for this time, and um, good luck good luck with tonight, and good luck with everything, all your future endeavors. I mean, I know I'm always uh, keeping an eye out and supporting, even though I can't wear anything just yet, because you know. But it's, <laughs> it's it's all good. And and actually, one more thing I wanted to add. We've actually got 
in our bedroom, my, my wife and I, we've actually got two of your um, bandanas. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I've actually got a little story. I've told the viewers before, but I want to tell you this. So obviously you you met my my mother in law Rena, um, who unfortunately did end up passing away. Um, however, my auntie bought your second season's campaign of canteen bandanas. Is that am I saying this right? I, I think I remember around the time of the funeral, um, they because Samantha's dress. Um, had nightingales on it, and yes. um, the the nightingale is kind of like a symbol that we've been using um, in lots of our collections, just because it's very it, it's got a beautiful symbolism f- behind it. It's a it's a songbird that sings love songs, and um, your mother in law was very fond of obviously the embroidery that she yeah. she was very much involved in designing Sam's dress. And um, when we released the bandanas for Canteen, they kind of came out at the same time around the funeral. And um, Sam got in touch with me um, just because she said that she, she kind of felt like that that bird had become really symbolic with her mum. And yeah. um, so um, she had actually gotten a, a few of the scarves to wear, I believe, at, at the funeral. Yes, yes. Uh, so, yeah, so that that made it, I, I think, even more special for me, and and I was really because I think putting the nightingale on the bandana, I wasn't really too sure about it, how people would react to it. But um, when Sam said that, I, I kind of knew that I'd made the right choice there. So yeah. um, I was really really happy yeah. about that. Um, and then and then literally a year to the day, obviously it was it was um. You know, obviously around the funeral time, it was actually Rena's one year, um, my mother-in-law's one year, uh, you know, since her passing, and you had released the second range. It's a blue, it's a blue colour. Yeah, and, yeah. Rock, and, and they and, had nightingales and dandelions on there. And yeah, and, and my auntie, my mum's sister, walks in our front door with it in a frame, and we were just like, and Samantha, oh. Samantha was just, you know, like, couldn't believe it, it was like literally... And she's like, how did you know that like that was linked? And she like, I don't think my auntie knew. And it was just, it was just like it was meant to be. It was like a little little message for us. So yeah, I just share nice. that with you, that's mate. Because awesome, I haven't man. seen you since. But um, nah, you know, yeah, that's that's uh, just how life is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, say a big hello to Sam because yeah, she was she was so lovely to work with, and um, yeah, hope she's doing okay. We'll do. Yes, awesome. we'll do. We'll pass it on. Good to chat to you, oh, man. Good to see you. you. Hopefully... Sorry? Hopefully I'll see you on another shoot. Yes. Yeah, well, there'll be another one coming up. Well, you, you were at the last one with when we're doing the headshot. Yeah, that's right. Waving a torch in my yeah, eyes. I, 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 I did my heat checks, my lighting checks. You, you know? did, yeah. You did a lot of talking too. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't bring him back. I wouldn't. But anyway, <laughs> thanks, thanks awesome. Paul. Appreciate it, mate. Have a great night. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great night and good luck with everything. Thanks, man. Take care, dude. Catch you soon. Bye. Bye.